David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today, I have for you something very interesting, in my opinion. It is the latest release from Narwhal in their luxury Ikaku line. That pen is called the Pan Long. Uh, it is an ebonite pen with an Arushi lacquer finish using the Mackie art of Chinkin. Uh, there is a lot going on with this pen. Thanks go out to the good folks at Narwhal for providing this pen on loan for review. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this intriguing offering, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, Ikaku is the luxury extension of the Narwhal brand. The pen arrives in this nice wooden box. It has Ikaku on the front. Uh, Ikaku is the Japanese word for narwhal. Uh, inside there is a warranty card. And then we have the pen. Get it out here. This is the pan long. Uh, pan long translates from Chinese to mean coiling dragon, which is appropriate since the design on this pen is a coiling dragon. Uh, Pan Long is an aquatic dragon often found in Asian mythology. In this image, the dragon can be seen having a front leg touching the water and a back leg reaching up to the clouds. Uh, it's tough to get a look at the full image here, so during the size comparisons, I'll give you a closer look at the overall design. Uh, as I mentioned, this pen is made from ebonite with Irushi lacquer and the Mackie art chinkin technique. Uh, and that is a technique where very talented artisans use sharp tools to carve out a design in the pen. Uh, think of it like a tattoo. Uh, the artist has a template that then gets applied to the exterior of the pen, and then they follow the design that way. That way they can like replicate the patterning rather than needing to uh, basically freehand everything from memory on each pen. Uh, it's a fascinating technique, and there is no room for air. Once you carve, uh, there's no going back. Uh, and then once the design has been carved, then it is filled with either gold leaf or gold powder. Um, I believe in the case of this pen, both the gold and silver portions are filled with gold and silver powder. Uh, these are some microscopic pictures of the intricate lines and dots that are carved into the pen. Uh, in regard to the dragon, uh, its foot has five claws, which is notable. Historically, only the emperor of China was allowed to use the imagery with five claws. Uh, everyone else was required to create dragon imagery with only four claws. Okay, let's take a look at the parts and features of this pen. The top of the cap is rounded. Uh, this transitions into the semicircle clip. Uh, it's a little tough to see here, but underneath the clip it is engraved with Ikaku, which is at the top and obscured, and then below that uh, it has the number of this pen. This is a limited edition of 24 pens, with this one here being number 7. Uh, this is the only exterior branding on this pen, uh, though there is a little Easter egg hidden on the cap. Uh, over here on the left-hand side of the clip there is a little stylized narwhal, which is the company's logo. Now, the narwhal is floating up here in the silver clouds. Uh, maybe the image could have uh, been at the bottom of the barrel where the sea is. Now, here is a microscope shot of the narwhal. Uh, it's difficult to see with the reflective silver powder to get a crisp picture, uh, but you can see how the lines aren't quite perfect on the right-hand side, which, which isn't a negative. It just indicates to me that this is something which was made by hand. It wasn't a machine that just didn't perfectly laser engrave everything here. A human had to painstakingly carve everything you see. And it helps remind me that an artisan was involved. In addition, up in the upper left-hand corner, if you look closely, you can see the brush strokes of the applied Arushi. Uh, the cap is straight. Uh, at the end, there is a medium-sized step down to the barrel. Uh, like the cap, the barrel is straight. Uh, and also like the cap, it comes to a rounded end. The cap twists off with two full rotations, and underneath we have a number 6 14 karat gold nib. Um, I do like the stamping here with the stylized narwhal logo dancing between the waves on um, either side of the nib. I think it looks really clever. Uh, this nib is available in both fine and medium. And here's a look at the plastic feed. 
The section begins with a flare and angles up only slightly before reaching the threads and a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Uh, this pen is comfortable on the hand. It is fairly light. Uh, and the pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. Uh, the cap is not designed to post. Even if it was designed to post, I wouldn't feel comfortable posting on top of the chinkin design. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Uh, with the one-piece ebonite construction of this barrel, eye dropping in theory is possible, but I'm not sure I would, it would be wise. Um, I'm uncertain how the exterior treatment of this pen would react if it was really exposed to a significant amount of ink, if you should have an accident while you're inking up the uh, pen with an eyedropper. Uh, it might be perfectly safe, but I personally would not risk it. The Ikaku Pen Long is available through several large retailers. As I previously mentioned, this is a limited edition of only 24 units, so there's not going to be tons of stock everywhere. But as you could deduce, this is a luxury pen, and it comes with a luxury price. Uh, it retails for $1,888. Uh, eight is the luckiest number in Chinese culture. I had mentioned a couple of reviews ago about how in certain Asian cultures the number four is considered unlucky because one of the words for four sounds like the word for death. Um, as a contrast, uh, in these cultures, eight is considered the luckiest number because it's pronounced similar to the word for uh, prosperity and wealth. But while the price for this pen is rather steep, uh, it's not out of line with the other high quality Chinkin models on the market from other manufacturers. Um, it's fairly common to see high end pens with techniques like this in the five, six, seven, or even $10,000 range. It is extremely labor intensive to create pens like this and requires a special artisan. Uh, one of these days, I would love to add a Chinkin pen to my collection. Okay. Thanks again. Go out to Narwhal for providing this pen on loan for review. Uh, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Ikaku Pan Long. I just wanted to give you another closer look at that since, you know, it was tough to get an overall look. So we have the dragon here. There is his head. There we go. We can get a good look at his head there. Uh, and just like how his feet are playing with the ocean here. Uh, and there are the five claws. Uh, and then there is even a fireball up here, and he is playing in the clouds, where the clouds are up here at the top. Uh, it's a real nice piece of work. And in regard to some size comparisons, uh, here it is with a Pilot Custom 845. Uh, and then here it is with a Nakaya Dorsal Fin 2. Uh, and then finally here it is with a Platinum Izumo. Uh, and just in regard to some other narwhal models, uh, this one here was called the original. Uh, and then this one here was called the Rose Gold Demonstrator. That one was available through uh, Galen uh, Leather. I don't know if they're still available, but it's a nice offering. And then this one here, this rainbow model, model was called the uh, Grand Rhapsody. In regard to uncapped comparisons, uh, this is what it looks like with that uh, rose gold demonstrator. Uh, and then here is the Pilot Custom 845, and here is the Platinum Zumo. So here we have the writing sample for the Narwhal. Kaku, and this is the Pan Long, and this is a medium 14 karat gold nib, uh, and the ink I'm using here today is Narwhal's Atlantic Blue.
You know what? Sorry, this is actually a fine. I thought it felt a little finer than a medium. But this is what the ink looks like. Um, it's kind of a nice dusty blue gray. I call it like a blue gray more than a gray blue. Uh, it looks very similar to uh, Monteverde's iced cookie. Uh, and then here it is with Ferris Wheel Press's bluegrass velvet. This is what the bottle looks like. It's just a 20 milliliter bottle, uh, but uh, Narwhal has some decent inks. They have a couple of varieties that they offer. And in regard to the rest of the writing sample, Um, I like the writing experience that this 14 karat gold nib offers. Um, it feels uh, significantly nicer than the steel offerings. Not that there's anything wrong with Narwhal steel offerings, but the uh, the gold, you can certainly feel the difference. Um, it, you can get a little bit of flex out there. I wouldn't push it too hard. There was a little bit of a skip here at the beginning after I pushed it hard. Uh, in regard to the... Ink flow, I'd say it's on the medium to high side uh, in regard to some reverse writing. I wouldn't say that that's a strength of this particular pen. And in regard to some fast writing. The feet keeps up very well. So there we have the Narwhal Ikaku Pan Long. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I've been fascinated by this technique that's used. I've seen it on several different pens. Uh, and one of these years, uh, I would certainly love to add a, uh, a Chinkin Technique uh, pen to my collection. So thanks go out to Narwhal for letting me uh, uh, take a look at this pen and play with it for a little while. Uh, and that if you'd care to take a look at it, uh, I'd check it out further. Like I had mentioned before, it's available on a couple of different retailers' sites, mostly the prominent ones. So until next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.